Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to finding better for you and the planet, makeup, skincare, and beyond. I try it out for you so you know what to buy, more importantly, what not to buy. Today I'm talking about my 10 favorite makeup hacks right now. They help me get the most use out of what I currently have, and I know I have a lot, but these things expire, especially the cleaner, greener options. If you wanna hear more about this, then stick around and let's get into it. 10 hacks, ideas, things that I've learned. These are the ones that were a little bit less obvious for me, so I thought it would be more interesting and more helpful, more importantly. Sorry, cat's gonna just and most importantly, I want these to be helpful to you. So if you find this channel helpful, hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell notification. These little clicks, they really do help this channel in a very big way, so thank you so much for your support there. I'm gonna dive into the first hack, which is combining a little bit of highlighter with body oil. So I had a video recently where I talked a lot about another hack that I'm doing. It's taking almond oil and adding some of my favorite body oil to that to just extend the life of it. I found an essential oil that I like. I'll put a link to that video below. I use almond oil a lot these days for right after the shower to moisturize my skin. This could also work with a moisturizer as well. You can take something like I have the Ilia Liquid Light here. So this is just a liquid highlighter nice shine we're not talking glitter disco balls but hey you could do that too put a couple of pumps of this into your body oil your body moisturizer glide it across the arms the decollete sounds fancy basically just here and you have an automatic glow there are products that come packaged like this something like this from cora organics this is the sun kiss glow body oil which i really have to dive into they exist like that, but you know, if you don't wanna buy a separate product, then that combination is just something to try. I think you could also use a little bit of bronzing powder, loose bronzing powder, mix it in with your oil. If you need a little bit more metallic and your bronzing powder is more matte, add a little bit of highlighter to it, and you just created your own little luminous, sun-kissed, glowy body oil. Easy. Okay, the next is creating a tinted moisturizer out of what you probably already have on hand if you have powder foundation. So I'm using this Alima Pure Powder Foundation. I actually had that on my face today. Take a day cream, like a face cream, something like this from Osmia. This is one of my all-time faves right now. In the beginning, wasn't the biggest fan, but I've grown to really, really love this. You can use something like this, a face cream that you have laying around. Again, the whole point of this is to repurpose, so not necessarily going to have product links here. I just want you to think about the categories and combining them. Put a little bit of moisturizer on top, mixy mixy, put it on your face, you're done. And it's actually very effective. Some people have talked about doing this with water. I haven't tried it with water. I figure why not get the hydration and benefits of coverage that I'm already gonna want, and so I used it with face cream, but you could try water too. But this is a wonderful combination. You just made your own tinted moisturizer, and depending on what's going on with your foundation and your cream, it could be a brightening moisturizer, it could be a color correcting, you could be doing your BBs and your CCs, you just, you might already have it laying around. The other one I do, all the time, which you've probably already seen in my get ready with me's, but it's worth mentioning. I know I just talked about a powder foundation and a cream, liquid foundation with a cream. I like this for a number of reasons. I love it specifically during the hot months because I don't wanna have too much on my face. It's just sort of thins out the formula, even if it's already thin, it creates a nice dewy glow without looking like you're a grease slick. It really moisturizes nicely. And if your foundation doesn't have SPF in it, you can use something that does have SPF, combine the two, put it on your face, and you're good to go. Okay, the next one, this I've talked about in the past. I have the 100% pure SPF Yerba Mate setting spray. It's getting a little bit blown out by the light, sorry about that. The brand recommends on this bottle not to spray directly onto the face, mind you. Do as I say, not as I do. I've done that. I've just held it all the way back here and used it as a setting spray. Still, what I'm doing these days with this spray is I put it on my hands, press them together, and I press it on top of what I already have. And it's really light. This isn't the slathering your face in SPF 50. If you're gonna be at the beach, I'm not a dermatologist. That should be shocking to nobody. I highly recommend using way more, applying way more liberally. This is primarily for quick afternoon reapplications when you're not exposed to direct sunlight or else you could potentially be getting burnt. And that's my reapplication because you're supposed to reapply and I've always heard that and then I go, whoa, 
I have full face of makeup. Like, how am I gonna reapply now? This is one of the things I like doing. This is another one which I think, something that I forget and I just have, I don't know, I just wanted to talk about it. So this is all about if you have a lipstick, say you put on a really strong pigmented lipstick or a lip gloss and you just wanna fine tune the line a little bit, but you don't have a lip pencil, maybe you don't want that line, that harsher line from a lip pencil. Sometimes what I do is I will take and remove the excess lip gloss off of a doe foot applicator. I have the Oleo Yasso right here. And this is more of a flat applicator. The doe foot, this actually makes it a little bit easier, but any doe foot will do. You can use this as a lip liner. Just use your doe foot applicator as a lip liner to really blend it out. If you are looking for something that is far more defined, of course you're going to wanna go in the lip pencil direction or maybe a brush if that works better for you. But for me, I'm sort of an on the go, put it on and go kind of person. And I like having things like this on hand, especially if I'm wearing red lipstick. Sometimes that just gets really iffy looking. And this is a good way to put it on. The light reflects, it looks like it's very fresh all of a sudden and you're good to go. So. That's another one. Okay, the next is using lip balm in a number of different ways. So this is a multi balm from Coco Kind. It's their My Matcha All Over Moisture Stick. You can take a little bit of lip balm and you can use, sometimes you can get those spatulas, you can use the end of a brush and shave off a little bit of that balm, put it in the palm of your hand, and then take a blush, a more, well, it depends on whatever shade you feel like. Right now I'm looking at the 100% Pure Blush. This is one of my favorites. It's their Fruit Pigmented in Pink Plum. This is a really nice, lovely pinky color. So say you have a little bit of lip balm in your hand, take a little bit of this in your hand as well. Again, just kind of softly brush it so you get a couple of loose granules or use a loose powder blush, might be the easier way to go. Combine the two in your palm and you have an instant lip gloss that you just made and it's a brand new color that you've never tried before. It's like, what? It can be a lip gloss. It can also double as a really nice cream blush and it gives you a little bit of highlight on the cheek or wherever you wanna put it on your face. And of course it works as a cream shadow if you're into the warmer, pinkier hues. You can use your blush in a bunch of different ways. And I've already done that, I definitely just repurposed blush as eyeshadow, but I thought, okay, this would be a cool thing to try for lip gloss, and I loved it. I'm going to keep this lip balm out because let's try that again, but with a different product as the combining product. So again, shave off a little bit of the lip balm, and then sprinkle on a loose eyeshadow, a pigmented loose eyeshadow. I have the Root Beauty one in the navy. This is my new eyeshadow. It's already incredibly pigmented. I did the unboxing yesterday, but if you sprinkle a little bit of this navy shadow with the balm, pull out a nice little angled brush like this, and you have a very creamy liner that you can use. It might slide a little bit, so make sure you set appropriately. You can do powder on top. You can watch a ton of YouTube channels from the actual makeup artists. I am not one. I prefer watching it on YouTube. You can create an eyeliner out of it. What I've done more often is I've taken the balm, I've applied this shadow to my lid. I've done it with really cool greens. I've done it with bold blues. You can do purples. You can do anything and it really makes it pop. You wanna make it super duper pop and you're okay with an extra step. You can try using white eyeliner underneath or some type of white shadow base. If you have oily lids, that's gonna be another layer. You might wanna reconsider. But for those of you that don't, that could be an option that also just makes it really, really amplified. Or if you don't want that and you want a smudgier look, which I prefer, then you can just combine the lip balm with the powder eyeshadow, do your thing, put it on the face, you're done. Okay, the next, here's a hack for brows. Sometimes in the morning when I use my gua sha tool, which I do every morning, actually I didn't do it today, a rare thing, but I'll put my facial oil on, I'll do my gua sha, a part of it goes over the brows. It doesn't go on, it goes over. Um, and then everything's lovely and moisturized and plump. Then I usually apply brow product first. So I use some brow pencils, primarily brow pencils. I like the way those look more so than the putties. But 
I'll take something like this Eco Brow brow pencil and I'll just start underneath. And what I have found is that there's oil there and so this gets a little bit PC and it doesn't apply correctly as much as it would to a dry face. So you're thinking, cool, just wipe off the oil, you're fine. Well, yeah, you can do that, but I found that I'll take a damp washcloth. After I wash out, I'll wipe the brows off and then I'll just take a little bit of setting powder this is the 14E setting powder. You can use anything translucent setting powder like this and just get a big fluffy brush, very small amount goes at the, do you see like the smoke plumes? It's notorious for doing that, but I still love it. Big, big fluffy brush, pop that on there and then just go over your brows. Give them just a second and I'm telling you, the brow product goes on top of that so much better. It holds, it grips, and while I usually don't have problems with that falling off or sliding around throughout the day, for some reason this is an oily area, this will help absorb excess oil and then hopefully keep the brow product there for the majority of the day. It's like an added benefit. Another way to use the powder, this is a little bit more obvious, you might know this one, but I figured I'll just throw it in the mix because it's Friday, why not? You can put on top of a lipstick that you do not want to budge throughout the day. I don't do this often. I'll do this on days where I know I'm out and about like interview days, event days. So I don't use this often, but when I do use it, it works real well. You apply your lipstick and you can do this a number of times. Some people say you do it three times and it sets forever. I'm like, I don't want to do this three times. Lipsticks on, you put a very light Kleenex on. Don't get any of those fancy heavy duty puffs plus situations. And then you'll put a little bit of this powder on your brush, big fluffy brush again. Put the Kleenex over your mouth. So you're already kind of dabbing it off a little bit. And then you just put the powder on top. You're not applying powder directly onto the mess. So there are makeup artists out there Again, I am not one, I am not even close to a beauty guru. I'm just here learning and sharing as I go. There's a camp of people that like to apply directly to the mouth with the powder. And then there's another group that says, you know, have a covering and then apply on top. I'm sure people feel strongly one way or the other. That is just life. But what has worked for me is putting the Kleenex as a layer in between, and then it just gives it enough staying power without it feeling dry. I hate when my mouth is just super, super, super dry and I can feel it when I'm talking. So I don't like to apply directly on. The other thing you can do here, if you're in a pinch, you could just take a little bit on your finger and lightly brush it. Like sometimes I'll set my concealer that way. That works too. No big deal. Yeah, the other key about having a Kleenex over it is that you don't get any graininess. Nobody wants a grainy lip, I feel. Is that just me? Probably not. All right, and the last one, you've heard me say it a million times, I always wish there were samples for everything. I think it would cut down on waste. I think it would help us spend better. We're not there yet in the industry, but there is one category in particular where there are usually a few more samples available. Not all the time in the case of this product that I'm holding in my hand, mascara. If you can get a sample size or a travel size for a mascara, do it. Always, always, always opt for the travel size. There's a couple of reasons. One is a conspiracy theory in my own head. I swear that whenever I get a travel size of mascaras or lipstick and then I get the full size, for some reason, it may be mental, but I always find the travel or sample size to work better. I don't know what that is. It happened with Bite Beauty. It happened with a bunch of different mascaras. The other main reason here is because mascara goes fast and I'm holding up the Erin's Faces Matcha Mascara. This is the new one wearing it today. Happen to love it, don't have a full review yet, but so far so good. This lasts for three months. Most of them last for three to six months. They'll tell you on the bottle or some people ride it out. You know, they put a little bit of saline solution. Like I've done that in the past. I've also got an eye infection in the past, so I definitely err on the side of better safe than sorry. They go quickly, especially when they don't have a lot of extra preservatives. Do you know what I mean? So you don't wanna spend this money and then have to use it quickly and what if you don't get through it? Then it's wasteful. It just doesn't make sense. So in a way, I kind of wish everybody just offered things. I'm saying it again in these travel sample sizes, more affordable. Listen, if I get enough followers here, if I can grow this channel enough, trust me, I will be looking into somehow creating this. Somehow, some way, someday. Dreams. I digress. If you can get it, get it in the travel size. That's really it. Just ran through my 10 hacks that I think will help you extend the life of some of the products that you already have laying around. You don't always have to get the, the next best, greatest, latest launch. 
but of course sometimes we like to. I get that side too. So let me know if you give them a try. If you have any tips or hacks yourself that you'd like to share, please do so in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching again. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to support the channel and never miss a thing. I will see you guys right back here real soon. Until then, bye.